want to provide the perfect electric powertrain, but we also want to provide the perfect digital feature setting for our car. Less hardware, more software in the car means if you look at the money that you pay for a car, right now perhaps 30% of the cost of goods sold goes into IT related things, so that's the chips and the software, and this percentage will grow. It's about lighting, it's about animation inside the car, it's about features we are providing over the entertainment system of our customers. The hardware needs to be there, the car needs to be performant, and the features on top, this is the differentiation. Había anuncios de Xiaomi, había anuncios de Apple, había anuncios de Sony, que ya han dicho que van a entrar. Y ellos van a entrar con un concepto totalmente nuevo del coche. Lo que hasta ahora para nosotros era muy importante, la calidad de construcción, etc., ellos parten de una base totalmente distinta. Lo que decíamos antes, ellos parten de una base de software. What we will most likely see if they enter the space is some highly standardized uh, car that might even be assembled on a completely automated production line. But then basically the real music will be in the data and the customization through the data. Uh, for us as powertrain, we will continue being there because we will continue having a powertrain in each one of the cars, whatever car means uh, in the future. But for the OEMs of today, I think this is very challenging. And that's why a lot of the OEMs of today are starting to invest a lot more in software and creating even a separate company for software because they understood already that this is going to be the disruption piece into the industry today. Cars especially are not owned anymore, they're actually used and you pay per use. And this is a great trend and a great shift which changes the utilization of cars, changes the number of cars, changes also business models. You know, why should the cars be utilized 3%? Think about how much carbon footprint you need for even producing a car. So if you have, instead of 500,000 cars in Barcelona, you have only 50,000, which you may need. Yes, it's an incredible difference. Will we have the e mopeds Will we have the e-scooters? Will we have the e-bicycles? I see the Uber model. So like you really want someone to drive you. You don't even own the car. You don't even want to drive the cars. A platform of cars available for you to take whenever you want. What about the people living in uh, Oberpfalz in Germany or Extremadura in Spain? We think that with 150,000 cars, a country like Germany could be as covered as that you are uh, that you are available on five kilometer range with a car mm -hmm. across the entire country. I don't think we need to solve like the very last person in the last village and, and, and take away the car. Why, why should we, right? But the problem with cars is not that somebody in, I don't know, a lonely village in Pamplona or somewhere has a car, right? The problem is when they enter the city. So what, what might help is more that you build, I don't know, like a hub in front of the city where you can park your car and then seamlessly go into other modes of transportation to enter the city, to enter the airport. Actualmente solamente utilizamos entre un 10 y un 15% del data que guardamos. Imaginaros si nos ponemos a utilizar toda la información que está embebida en los datos que guardamos. Hoy estamos muy centrados en la tecnología, en encontrar la batería eléctrica, la infraestructura, pero a futuro el dato va a ser realmente el activo principal que persiguen todos los stakeholders, todos los operadores del sector. Hace 10 años empezamos a generar esa generación, que valga la redundancia, de, de data miners y cinco años después eh, se convirtieron en data scientists. Y ahora estamos en el punto en el cual lo que tenemos que hacer es una nueva generación de data storytellers generar emoción, ver cuáles son las emociones que vamos a montar alrededor de los datos. Esa explotación de datos es básica y lo que tenemos que conseguir es que los datos estén disponibles para los diferentes miembros del ecosistema. Todo esto va a estar protegido por una nube y estos serán los aspectos probablemente más relevantes y disruptivos que tenemos en el mundo del dato. 
La pregunta es, ¿hay que regular esto a nivel europeo, a nivel global? Desde una perspectiva del mundo telco, sin lugar a dudas. Más que una red centralizada, se piensa más en una red distribuida. Porque cuando un vehículo está circulando, lo que es muy importante es gestionar los activos y las circunstancias en un radio de distancia muy corto alrededor del vehículo. Hay que incluir dentro de los vehículos unas capacidades que a día de hoy no existen para aplicar cierta inteligencia dentro del coche y que la información que salga ya sea la mínima. ¿Cómo se resuelve esto? Pues esto se resuelve poniendo sistemas de procesado de datos, Edge Computing, pues en ese cruce.